Hello everyone. Welcome back to this lecture. In this lecture, we will be learning about overloading. I have told you about that polymorphism is divided into two parts, compile time and run time, where overloading is a part of compile time. So, let's start. C++ overloading. If we create two or more members having the same name but different in number or type of parameter, is it known as C++ overloading. So, in C++ overloading, we have two or more members having the same name but different parameters. We call it as overloading. In C++ we can overload methods, constructors. So, in C++ we can overload two, we can say two methods and constructors also. Types of overloading. There are two types of overloading. One is operator overloading and one is function overloading. In operator overloading, we will be overloading a operator, where in a function overloading, we will be overloading a function. Function overloading. The name suggests itself that over here we will be overloading a function. Function overloading is defined as a process of having two or more functions with the same name but different in parameters is known as function overloading in C. Over here, we will be having two or more functions that have the similar name, but the parameters will be different. The advantage of function overloading is that it increases the readability of the program because you do not use different names for the same action. So, function overloading also helps us to increase the readability of the program. Let's move to code blocks so that we can have an example on function overloading. So, Let's start with the coding part. So, we, you can see that I have included the header files. Let's create a class. Having a, let's name it as call. Okay. Now, I will be writing the access modifier that is public. By default, they are, by default, they are private. So, integer add, I will be creating a function add having a argument of a and in parameters of a and b. I will be defining the function inside this only. So I will be returning the value as a plus b. Okay. Similarly, I will be creating a, another function having the same name. You can see that I have created another function having the same name of integer add. But I will be changing the parameters over here. I will be writing, so taking total three parameters. And I will be returning a plus b plus c okay now we will be creating an integer main function okay now we will be creating an object of the class call okay now i will be writing c out i will be calling the function using the object c1 dot add and i will be passing the values as 10 comma 20 okay then I will be having of end of the line that is an end of the statement. Then again I will be writing C out and I will be calling add 10, 20, 30. So total three arguments. Okay. Now we are done with the program. Now we will be compiling this program and running it. So you can see the result or the output over here that we are getting 30 and 60. So in the first one, we have called the first function that is add having the parameters of 2. In the next one, we are having called add having the parameters of 3. So you can see that we have done over here is a function overloading. Having the same name but different arguments or parameters. Operator overloading. So you have seen about the function overloading in the code blocks. So you got an idea what is function overloading. Similarly, is the operator overloading. We will be overloading the operator. Operator overloading is a compile time polymorphism in which the operator is overloaded to provide the special meaning to the user defined data. It is used to perform the operations on the user defined data type. The advantages of operators overloading is to perform different operations on the same operand. 
operators that cannot be overloaded. So there are some specific operators that you cannot overload. Scope operator. This is a scope resolution. It is used when you have to define a function outside the class. Similarly, the size of function. Member selector. So these are some of the operators that you have to keep in mind. So quickly let's move to code blocks so that we can also have a quick example of operator overloading. So you can see now we will be creating a class as as I will be showing you an example. I will be using a class as example. I will be creating a two variables integer a and b. Okay. Then I will be writing public. This is an access modifier that everyone knows. Now I will be creating a function void input. Okay. In which I will be writing c out enter the values of a and b right then i will be writing c in a b okay now i will be creating another function that is saying void operator operator is a keyword over here do keep in mind which operator i am going to upload i will be using the minus so Operator function, we will be using operator function as a member function. Now we will be writing that a is equal to minus a and b is equal to minus b. Now I will be declaring another function void display. Okay. Now this function will help us to display. So I will be writing over here c out a is equal to a end of the line b which is equal to b and end of the line ok so now we will be creating a integer main function now we will be creating an object e1 so e1 dot input we will be calling a function e1 dot input function so we will be writing c out before overload overload ok then i will be calling e1 dot display function ok Then I will be writing C out. Oh, sorry. I will be calling minus E1. Okay. I will be writing C out after overloading. Then I will be using E1 dot again display function. That's it. So we have created two uh, variables a and b. Similarly, then I have created a function of input that we will be entering the values of a and b. Then we have an operator. We have a function over here that is a minus one, which will be overloading the operator. So I have created an object e1. E1 will be calling an input. We will be inputting the values and we will be getting displayed that is before overloading. Then we will be calling a minus function to which we will be the operator will get overloaded. So let's compile and run the program and let's see the results. We should remove this. Now we will be running the program again. So you can see the enter the values of a and b. I will be entering the values 5 and 10. 5 and 10. So you can see the value of the first value was 5 under 10 and B value was 10. So before overloading the value of A was 5 under 10 and the B was 10. So after overloading we got it's minus 10 and then we got it as minus 10 over here. Minus 5 under 10 and minus 10 over here. So the function got overloaded over here. So this is how we will be doing 
the operator overloading. So you got an idea like how we will be doing the overloading. In our next lecture, you will be learning of virtual function or we will be doing a runtime polymorphism. This was at a compile time because whenever you do the compiling, it is done at the compilation time. But when you are doing at the runtime, it is done at runtime. Thank you.